and Mike are like literally about to die. Just pushing the car in, like it was so freaking hot. So Mike was like, I'm gonna run up there and get a uh, a uh, energy drink. So I got a monster and like, I'm normally like naturally high. Of course, Mike got the oatmeal and an energy the double drink. Double decker oatmeal cream pie. Double decker cream pie with an energy drink. And then I done told him I'm ordering pizza here in like an hour or so. This um, thing is 490 calories for one snack. 500 calories for a cookie. And then how many pieces of pizza are you about to pound down? Oh, as many as I can fit. See, it's too hot to be doing all that. <laughs> but I'll, I thought- I'll throw it up and do it again. It's, ba it's bad when I go get an energy drink, it's bad. Cause I'm like, I've got like no sleep hardly lately. And everybody around me is like, you look exhausted. Uh, my wife today said it looks like I've aged 10 years in the past five years. And um, I'm like always running on a natural like high. Everybody says you're like on a natural freaking cocaine. And uh, for me to go get an energy drink, it, that's, that's really bad. Because normally I'm jacked up enough naturally to not need nothing, so. We're about to get all jacked up on, uh, not Mountain Dew, nope. a little bit of everything. Red Bull and Monster. And uh, install some 10 soldier full length brackets. So y'all stay tuned. Alright, so we are going to get the four link brackets, uh, the height on them established first. So what I need to do is I'm going to have to climb inside the car and uh, Mike's going to have to do the measurement or whatever. We're going to have to uh, figure out how high the four link bracket is going to set up on the cross member that goes across the car. The bottom hole of your four link bracket for the 10 soldiers no prep or low prep radial brackets, okay? these brackets right here that they sell on their website is their newer ones they're the bomb a lot of people are ranting and raving about them as these okay the very bottom hole for the setting should be 3.5 to 4.5 inches off the ground no more than 5.5 if you want the bracket to work in the way it was intended to work with the correct geometry and everything um, you can go past that but then there's no guarantee that you can get the full usage out of their brackets. Uh, I spoke directly to 10 Soldiers Race Car and this is what he gave me. Um, all of their cars that they build, their race cars, they set them up at 4.5. The rockers are 4.5 inches off the ground. My rockers are at 7 inches off the ground. So uh, my car is a couple inches higher than what they slammed theirs at, which is pretty impressive for a garage built street car. I've got this thing this low. Um, so we're going to try to get that 4.5 inch uh, measurement. I kind of want it up higher so it don't drag the ground. Um, I know what doesn't work, which is what's in there. So we're going to hold it real fast, see how much of a difference it is than what's in there now, and um, then decide if we need to push it to 5.5 or 4.5 will work. So we measured this. I climbed in here and pulled a measurement. I held the tape measure on the ground and then Mike uh, got back here at the back of the car and eyeballed it underneath. So the center of this hole off of the pavement is 3.25, that hole's 4.25 and that hole's 5.25. So we really want to be uh, the center that hole's 4.25. We don't want to be no more than maybe the top of this hole as far as the center of this bottom hole, okay? Uh, hole right there in the orange that hole okay that we want to be 3.5 to 4.5 off of the ground at ride height no more than 5.5 so we could make it as high as you know this hole up here centered but I really don't want to I'd like to kind of keep it on the top of this hole or the bottom of this hole but I really like to try to hit the money of you know 4.5 like he said I'm just I don't want it so low that it's gonna drag but I think we'll be good because right now the bottom of the bracket Mike you said the bottom of the bracket was like 4.5 up the ground 425 yeah the bottom of the bracket off of the ground right now we only got like four and a half inches of clearance so it scrapes on every freaking thing so even moving it up here you know would be a huge gain so basically we would go 
roughly roughly like that would be the height increase that we would get. So I think that's, we're gonna try to keep it within their measurements that they suggested so that it works the best possible um, way. All right, so I'm gonna show y'all how jankity I was. So I actually had put spacers in here, okay? So this metal right here is a spacer because I had the wrong size holes. So there you can see my spacer. So these are three quarters, whereas the heim joints are a um, half an inch. So I had went in there and drilled these out to where they fit in there because I got these brackets wrong. So that is what we're correcting. And then on the back side back here, I actually had put plastic spacers in because that's the only thing that I could find at the time that would fit in there because these holes are 5 eighths and this is a half an inch. So we're fixing all that. We're putting 5 eighths joints, heim joints, in with 5 eighths bolts and 5 eighths holes. And then the new 10 soldier stuff is uh, half an inch and that's what we already have is half an inch. So you can see how, how bad that was. So that's the type of stuff. That's the reason why we're here tonight to fix all We've this. We've already about messed up and I took all these out before we found our distance between our tube and our car because you that's the center when it's at ride height. So right now it's drooping down and I've already got this set up so that when this is up in the air and it's at ride height, the axle is center of the wheel well opening. So we're taking our measurement from the tube to our cross member when it's hanging. And as long as we match that, then when it goes back to ride height, this should be close to the same wire line. So Mike, what was that angle on this one? 89 degrees. It was 89 degrees? Yeah. And we're writing down our angles of, check this one over here, of our four lengths. Probably all wrong. Just so that we can make sure everything is set back right. Pretty much 89 also? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll just jot it down just in case and then I'll get all this marker off later. So that way we don't, you know, we make sure that we've got everything back like it's supposed to be. So Mike is about to cut all of these four link brackets out and try to do it without burning the car. Everything's gonna catch on fire. This is the real me and Mike. This is how sketchy we really are. Um, we're not very professional at all. And we do a lot of sketchy stuff, but it works. So, spray bottle, uh, fire extinguisher. It probably don't work. Yeah, it probably don't work. That's the old one that they told the fire department told me was expired and that we needed new ones. But I'm not spraying my new ones because I paid a lot of money for my new ones. So the car will just have to burn down before I spray my new fire. ones. Well, we're, we're not, we ain't spraying no, the new ones. Yeah, they're expensive. The shop be on fire. We're not doing it. All right, so I'm gonna let Mike finish cutting these out. Hopefully uh, the car don't burn down. Should I hit that glowing red spot with a lot of water? Man, that scares the crap out of me every time. <laughs> no, you should not. What happens if I hit it with a ton of water? You'll quench it, I get weak. Bunch of cold water. It's that's, cold. That's why Mike is the semi-professional and I'm the amateur. Yep, semi-professional. So what we've done is we made these little half-inch rods 
that sit down through there to align everything so when you're welding it, it don't move. And then he can tack them, pull them out just like that, and then we'll put it in the next one and then he can weld it up. Yep, boy. You gotta kill! What's gonna separate you from everybody else? I do things to separate myself from everybody else. The passion that I have, the grind that I have when I do what I do. I got a different motor. I got a different grind. I'm always gonna give it my 110%. That's the only thing I can ever say a solid day's work. If you guys do not do that, I promise you, your life will haunt you for the rest of your days. From today on, you play whatever your best game is, you play that level every single time. It doesn't mean you're gonna score every time but you can always give 120 percent effort you can't dictate. all right so we got the four link brackets cut out everything cleaned up as good as it's gonna get we're actually gonna move the brackets over so instead of going over top of this because of this one i got tired of grinding this crap we're also gonna weld the back side of this cage that we could not get before when we originally did the car so we're gonna weld all of this up in here and then we're actually just gonna move instead of going Instead of going right on top of the bracket here, because this was taking so long to grind down, we're actually just gonna set it in right here beside it. And then we'll weld all of this together. So we got tons of meat to work with right here. So we're just gonna move them in, you know, an eighth of an inch. It's not gonna hurt anything at all. Um, and we're gonna flow these corners in better that we couldn't get the first time. Um, you know, and get, just get everything burnt in right here in this area. All right, so some of our holes are off just a touch. Like these are all actually, right but some of them are like that one right there it's a little it's a little tight to get it in and out so what we're gonna do is just take a drill bit a uh, half inch drill bit we're just gonna run through them all real fast just to make sure there's no little tiny variances in any of them just from welding uh, and make sure they're all smooth so it was actually only one of them just the doubler down here was off a touch all the other ones were perfect that's right because so, I know what I'm Michael knows what he's doing he claims <laughs> Uh, let's see here. This one's going to go in first. So we're going to feed all these through as an alignment tab. So when we put them in, it's not that hard to line everything up. So all we're doing now is just mocking up on the table so that we can basically get our spread right so we don't have to deal with it in the car. And then I think Mike's going to go ahead and weld this bar all the way on the outside out here. Then we'll put it in the car. We'll tack the outer brackets like I'll show you here in a minute. And then we'll take these inners and we'll slide these inners in, burn everything in, slide it back in, clamp it, burn all of that in. So he's just checking our spread and then we're gonna put it in the car, double check it, and then completely burn it in. So we got it tacked now on our spread. Now we're gonna grab it, not burn ourselves, and test fit it in the car and see if it falls where we want it to fall at. This is how we protect the car from catching on fire is with plywood so that the little spark, and then we have our little squirt bottle to put out a giant fire. This is how uh, much we are pro safety. We are tremendously pro safety. Well, we do have a uh, fire extinguisher down there, so let's you got one in your hand, please the fire. Yeah, I got a baby fire extinguisher. So all we've done is, see, Mike's tacked the outers, and now we've slid, that's good. Now we've slid the inners out of our way, so they're sliding on our bars. He went ahead and welded, you can't really see it, but he welded that outer. No, yeah, you I still have to weld that. You, we tacked it. Okay. <laughs> I know, but that sucks. We were supposed to weld, we were supposed I'll, to weld I'll, them I'll outers. We were supposed to weld them freaking outers on the bench and we completely freaking forgot, man. But it's it's all up there. Well, no, I mean, you can make it. I don't care. No, it'd be easy. Okay. So he still got to weld that up. But now he can burn the outer right here and the inner. Then he can slide this one in, try to get as much of the inner as this one he can, all of the outer. And then the top, you get the drift. So, uh, and we're keeping these bars in here so everything stays perfectly in line, you know, left to right. Uh, yeah, you get the drift. I don't it treat you like you're retarded. And then we're gonna tie this upper bar into the drive shaft loop because the drive shaft loop's tied in this cross member. Cross member is tied into this. So the chances of this flexing like this is uh, it's gonna take a lot, and this car does not make that much power.
We needed an inch and five eighths between our tire and a frame rail. That's what we measured uh, before we got started, the spacing that goes between there. So all I've done is took a two by four and some scrap aluminum and taped it. And from this to that is an inch and five eighths. So I'll just cram that in there and I'll set that perfectly. All right, so I've been working and try to catch y'all up real fast. So what we've done is we used ratchet straps basically to set our axle forward backwards, you know, side to side like this and everything. So we had four ratchet straps, one, two, and then we had three, four um, to set all that. And then we have a block of wood, that block of wood, I actually ended up turning it around. Uh, the metal actually ended up being too fat when I got it in here, but we have a block of wood on this side, block of wood on that side. So that centers our tires off of our, uh, frame rails and remember before we got started we measured from the inside of the tire to the frame rail and we got an inch and five eighths on both sides uh, roughly that was really that was really roughly but your pan hard bar can adjust that so you just want to get something neutral you just want to get measurements that are really close and then you can fine tune them with obviously your stuff um, so our lower bars we were actually able to reuse them right here so uh, I don't know how but uh, we were able to reuse them now we don't know if this is right as in if this bar is long enough or short enough for changing the angles like this so we don't know if you know when we make an angle change like this if the bar is gonna be too long or if we go like this it's gonna be too short um you know we have it pretty center i mean obviously it's centered right now on both sides it's, it's sticking out equal but we're gonna rock and roll with this because it's already 11 o'clock at night and there's no reason to put a bunch of thought into this when all you have to do is if when this car gets put together and it's working if for some reason uh, this is too short or too long then we simply when we get home we just take it out come to the shop and take out whatever we need and build another or build another bar you know there's no reason to cut this one up I mean these bars are so cheap and easy to build uh, when you do everything in-house so what we're doing now is obviously our upper bars are now too short so we're gonna take them and uh, cut these down so I don't remember the size of the inside of this tube but I did order new uh, heim joint tube ends so we're hoping that when we cut this tube in this will slip in there if it won't then we'll just simply come inside this weld cut these ends out of the tube grind our paint down obviously which grind our weld down and then move them down here and slip them back in so we'll just reuse these ends if these ends don't work but i'm praying that these work because this is going to speed us up where we can just cut this grind the paint off slip this in burn it in and we don't have to undo these so uh but no matter what we only have to do two ends um, because we're using two of the ends that are already existing. So the way my bars are going to be now because of the rear end being different and I'm not changing the rear end is this side is going to be half an inch. Okay. Bolt holes. This goes into the 10 soldiers, uh, brackets cause their holes are half an inch. And then my rear end brackets are five eighths. So this end is five eighths, but the shank of the heim joint is the exact same size as this one. So when we just did our lowers over here, Okay, it screwed right in. It screwed right in this one. So this is five eighths and this is a half an inch, but the shanks are the exact same on each end. So you can literally just unscrew them and change out the whole size so you're correct. That way I'm not changing these brackets. And I'm not changing these freaking brackets right now. Uh, we're gonna get this car up and running. And if I ever want to change these brackets, then I'm literally just gonna get rid of this whole rear end, which is an eight eight, and I'm just probably gonna go forward nine inch. Um, I'm not cutting off freaking brackets off an 8-8 housing um, to change it or I would just buy another junkyard housing and get brand new brackets and do the housing over again like I'm not I'm not messing with this it's way too much work like you you would have to be absolutely I don't know either extremely on a budget or stupid to cut these freaking brackets off I mean I could sell this rear end to somebody else and I'd sell the rims rear end the whole freaking nine yards and I would just get 12 wides or 14 wides on a more narrow uh, rear end. I'm not uh, messing with that crap. So that's where we're at right now. We still have our bar in here uh, because we were using it to uh, pull the ratchet strap uh, off of, but now we can hammer that out. So we're going to do the top bars and that's it. While Mike is doing the top bars, I'm going to tie this bar into our uh, drive shaft loop. I think that would be plenty for the horsepower level of this car. This car should never make more than uh, 1500. 
I would think if it makes more than 1500 we're gonna have uh, serious changes up front because I think the blower is supposed to max out at 1200 but people push it 13 14 um, the motor TKM is worried about it past a thousand of course the rods need to be changed out if we go if we start pushing past a thousand too much so with that said we have to obviously make major power plate changes you know anywhere from 12 to 1500 so at that point uh, we'd be putting a lot of money in and I just don't see the I don't see our setup that we're building back here not holding you know 1500 at all so I think that this will hold it perfectly perfectly fine but we're fabricators so if we ever see something um, you know messing up and uh, flexing or whatever we can fab something else in man these lights under here come in freaking amazing tonight uh, they're LED so they've been running all night for like five hours four hours and uh, haven't killed the battery I'll charge it again when I get home but it's definitely helped seeing underneath here so let me get to fabbing up that top one Mike's gonna fab up these lowers right here and get these welded up and uh, I have to fab a bracket for the pan hard bar because we are trying to get this done so we're gonna reuse the pan hard bar and just go right here somewhere with some kind of temporary bracket because we're bracket because we're gonna come back in and eventually change this to a wishbone and um, we still have to do the anti roll bar which probably won't be getting done tonight all right so that's as far as we got tonight Mike's messing on the computer 1209 we're gonna call it quits we got our game plan for tomorrow what we need I got my little piece made for the uh, top up there so I made this piece we plugged the end uh, Mike has not welded it he only tacked it we're gonna, I'm gonna drill a hole right here in the morning and put a nut cert here because this piece is going to stick up it's gonna go right here but it's gonna stick up a little right here on the top where my pinky's at so that's gonna be exposed so I figured go ahead and put a nut cert in it uh, just in case you either want to put a piece of like flat aluminum or carbon or something to box that in or you need to put a P clamp there or anything that you could possibly need to put there to uh, mount anything at least it's already nut certed and it's easy to do now so Mike uh, you know like I said we got the bottom ones in Mike got the uh, top ones made they're cooling down they're extremely hot so he got the top ones made them in pieces did fit uh, we figured out our anti roll bar so we have all of this weight that I cut out of the car. So I cut this whole piece out of the car. I don't know how much this weighs. I should have weighed it, but it's extremely heavy. I'm gonna save everything that I did cut out so we can weigh it when we're done. But this piece is stupid heavy. I wish y'all could feel it. So that was sprung weight, okay? Because that was on the car, that was sprung weight. So the springs have to lift, you know, that weight. We're gonna now move that bar. We're gonna move the anti-roll bar to here which is gonna be unsprung weight because it's hanging off the axle. So it'll come out and then there'll be a bar like this across with the other bar through it. And then the arms will come off of that and then the arm, the links will shoot up and then we'll tab the links off of the same one right here where the shocks are on. So we'll tab them about right here in the center at a later date and the arms will come down and pivot like this. So that way we're adding, we're hanging all this weight off the rear end and not on the car. Uh, this is your centerpiece that goes through all that too. And you can see how thick that is. I mean, this is crazy. So you got both of these bars for the anti-roll bar, okay? Both of these plus some flat stock, because that's not going back in the car. That's getting, it's getting welded just like this, but this is gonna be the axle bar that's already there. So all of that weight right there is gonna now be unsprung versus sprung. So that's a huge advantage, uh, taking a little weight off of what the shocks have to work on the back. Um, but all of our four link is in. We made pretty good progress for tonight. There's no reason to kill ourselves. Mike said that, he would have to come back tomorrow anyway. I greatly appreciate Mike helping because um, if not, then you know we'd have to drag this thing back again. Nobody wants to keep pushing, taking this thing in and out the garage, dragging it back and forth, pulling it in, setting up, putting it on the lift, and all that over when we could just knock it out at once. Wait till you get the bill for using the lift. Oh my you god! Seven hours on the lift so far. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't even know what he charges per hour to be on the lift. <laughs> I'm just going to do an IOU and never pay it, let it go to collections. Uh, uh, yeah, y'all be seen on the channel when I go to paint his truck and he pays nothing to get a whole truck painted. That's how me and Mike rolled it. We try to help each other out. Um, so yeah, we'll get back on this tomorrow and finish up these things. And the biggest thing now is we, I just want to get the welding done so I can get stuff painted and cleaned up and put together. So we've got to get the back stuff done tomorrow. That should, how long is that gonna take us? Two hours, honestly? That shouldn't be bad. Two, two hours and probably an hour on the front with both of us on the front. So three hours probably total to get the steering rack changed and 
uh, to get the anti-roll bar welded in. We're not doing the anti-roll bar, we're just welding the tube in right now because we still have to cut that other tube down, sleeve that tube, uh, extend the links, uh, order the brackets up top. So it will have to be welded. When we do the transmission, we'll weld them little tabs on. So the car will not have the anti-roll bar in it right now. Uh, that will be at a later date, but at least we will be set up where the majority of the welding is done. And the only thing we'll have to weld is little tabs up top that we can easily touch in. So it's not like it's gonna be messy or turn a grinding or nothing. And what I'll probably do, no, actually it's gonna be hard to get to. As they say, I'd go ahead and grind the paint off now and just leave it exposed, but it's gonna be hard to get to no matter what. Like it's not gonna be no easier now than it will be later. Um, so we're gonna call this a wrap for tonight. Uh, if y'all jumped on the live on Mike's channel, uh, greatly appreciate it. He got some watch hours in. Y'all got to kind of see a live feed. I know it was boring. I was hoping that I could jump on live tonight and answer some questions and stuff, but I didn't have nobody to help me. Mike stayed and helped me work, but obviously he's not going to sit there and hold the camera. The wife actually offered to put the kids down, have our oldest daughter watch, uh, you know, just make sure the little one don't wake up and then come to the shop and hold the camera for y'all and relay messages. But I told her that it's just YouTube live. It's not that big of a deal. There's no reason for her to do that and, you know, uh, inconvenience her like that over YouTube live. We'll have plenty of times to go live. So uh, we're going to wrap up tonight. I have got to work on the Fox tomorrow, buff on it some. Got to be back here at 8 a.m. again. So I'm going to try to get six hours of sleep tonight, hopefully. Um, and that's going to be, that's going to be it. So like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll catch y'all the next one.